Well, the book, what the book does is the first blue section goes through why, what, where, when, how, those kind of things, which we just pretty much discussed a lot of them. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And then I go into, okay, let's talk about preparedness and food storage. How am I thinking through food storage? So the orange section is um, a long-term storage we're going to start out with. Then we're going to do a 90-day and a sort of fresh ingredients. So with the long-term storage, I thought, okay, how simple is boiling water? So everybody thinks of with a thermal cooker. Let's start with that. So basically, you're going to boil water. And you're going to put it on the stove. That, that section, for instance, the Italian wedding shoe is in there. By the way, it's pretty good. So I'm not saying how you can up, but it's my favorite. It's really, really good. So what I've done is on one page, I have fresh ingredients and how to make it in here. On the other one, I've converted it over to freeze-dried and dehydrated meals. So you can make up your own. Okay? Sort of like this. This one doesn't look beautiful because I make it all the time. But a meal sort of like this. This one's chili. And it actually comes in two. It comes with two. So this is a chili rest, a, the chili recipe, and they're probably the white chili. And so you can make up your own. See these? There's labels. In the back of the book, there's a page for each recipe with labels. You can make copies of it, and then you'll have the labels. Put them on here. Then when you grab the jar, you know how to fix the food. Right? Okay? So what I would do is I put the water that I need to in here, bring it to a boil, put this in, let it come to a boil, maybe boil for a minute, whatever I need to. Goes in here. Close the lid. It's freeze dried and dehydrated. When's it going to be ready? Yeah. Right? You just need to let it half hour, 40, uh, an hour, I don't know, or eight hours, or seven hours. Whenever you want to eat that, it's going to be ready for you. That's the beauty of it. You fix it way ahead and it's ready later. Okay, the next part, I thought, okay, I've heard of, you've heard of meal in a bag, right? Or I guess meal in a bag. So I sort of did a bucket meal, okay? And I thought, oh, these buckets are so cute. Right? We're just going to do these little bucket meals. Okay, so the only recipe, because these are big pots, the only recipe I could find to fit in the actual bucket was this little spaghetti recipe. But I only put a few of these in there just to get you thinking about maybe recipes that you use that your family loves. Can you make it out of like 90 day type food storage? So I've got canned beans in here. I have my pasta sauce that I put up. I even put the water in it. So if you're grabbing, you can go. You've got the water, you put the pasta. It even has um, Parmesan cheese in it. Because this is a very important part. So I serve my mission in Italy, and my pasta sauce in the spaghetti section is the recipe I brought back with me when I came back. So when you find the spaghetti recipe, that's what it is. And I'm going to show other recipes like taco soup. I end up having to find new little boxes that were bigger to fit all the cans in. That was my point in the bucket. It's a cute bucket, but it's not. It doesn't work very well as far as that goes. Also, figure out a way to replace the stuff you steal. Because don't you do that? You steal stuff out of something, like a bucket. You're like, oh, wait, I need that. I'm going to grab that. And then when you go back and actually need it, it's not there anymore because you already stole it. So that one also talked about thickeners. Okay, so how do you know um, how, I mean, you have to bring the stuff to a boil. So I thought, okay, I started out thinking, okay, so if I thin it down first and then add a thickeners at the end, then I can thicken it up while it's in here and then stick like I want it and I make things. Like in the book is chicken enchiladas made in here and that's what I did. I thinned down the, the sauce part, brought it as close to a boil as I could get it and then added some other ingredients, the um, cheese, but see cheese can't come to a boil, right? So that's actually manipulating time. I'm not going to leave it in over four hours because the cheese doesn't boil and I use tortilla chips instead of um, tortillas. And I just pour them in, stir it around. My kids love it. Not my most favorite, but they love it. So I made it for them. Right? You like it, don't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to talk about other ways to do that, too. But that corn, that corn helps, the corn chips help thicken that up. It's pretty thick. It's like a goofy casserole. It tastes like chicken enchiladas. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the cream, the, what are they called? The cream, sour cream ones. Mm -hmm. so that's, that recipe's in there. Uh, so when people ask, oh, thickeners, one more thing about thickeners. If you use cornstarch, did you know that if you leave cornstarch in something that's warm for a long time, it loses some of its thickness? Yeah, I didn't even know that. That's so how much I know about things. And so what I love, other than the cookbook, actually the cookbook is about how to do thermal cooking. So if you didn't have one of these, you, it teaches you how to use a different type. 
So, other than a thermal, because of course the priority is the book, right? Then you want, act, you definitely want one of these pipes because I love it. And then you need a thermometer, which is really important. The next one is ultra gel. You guys have ultra gel? Okay. Clear, clear gel. Clear gel. Clear gel. Yeah. Whichever one it is. What I love about it is I can add it to the end. It doesn't clump or anything, does it? I don't know that much about that one. Mm -hmm. So, and it, it'll, it'll thicken that right up right at the end. You can leave it for five minutes and it'll be nice and thick for you. So, I love something like clear gel. That's what it is, right? Clear gel? Yeah, you need the hot one. Huh? You need the hot one. There's a hot and a cold? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you'd want the hot clear gel for the hot when you have heat. Okay? Good? So, if you want to just use this to begin with, then you won't have that problem. But I'm like trying to always save, save money. So I'm thinking if I use my cornstarch and my flour, then I change a little bit of this at the end to help it thicken back up. In five minutes it's thickened and we're good to go. So just a little way that I like to do things that way. So that's sort of what we talk about in that chapter or that section. Is we'll talk about manipulating a little bit. Then we want to talk about meat and things like fresh ingredients like that, like a meat. Um, and even sometimes I talk about hey, if you're in an emergency situation, you need to think about these things. How are you going to be able to produce them? Right? Are you going to have them? Are you going to have eggs? Are you going to have meat? Are you know, going to have a garden? Um, even though I talk about sides a little bit later, just sort of a little paragraph in there. Just think about how in your preparedness that you're going to be able to sustain with fresh ingredients. Whether you're going to dehydrate, you know, your garden, whatever you're going to do. But people always say, how long do I boil stuff? Okay, because basically the concept, like we talked about, you're going to put your food in here, it has to come to a boil. Once it starts to boil, you're going to start timing. Okay? How long do I time? Most of the time it's based on the meat. So if I have chunks of meat, technically it's a two minute boil. So what does that mean? I'll put olive oil, salt, and uh, not salt, uh, pepper, and uh, garlic, onion, saute a little bit, add some chunks of meat in there, like bite-sized pieces, toss it a little bit, add my liquid <coughs> to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, I'm going to time it for two minutes. <coughs> I'm going to add my gravy packet or whatever I want in there, chicken it up to whatever I'm going to eat it with, or add whatever my recipe is, and then if I'm adding vegetables, I'm going to boil them for a couple minutes once it comes back to a boil, right, like a pot roast or something. So once it comes to a boil, and then once it's boiled the right amount of time, it goes into the thermal unit. Usually things last, I like to do two hours. Sometimes I'm less, but not very often. Mm -hmm. Usually I'm doing it ahead, that's the point, right? The point is, I'm doing it ahead, so I don't have to worry about later. <coughs> so, then we talk about bigger pieces of meat. If I'm doing a pot roast, I can do something like this big. But what, <coughs> what it's going to do is require more fuel. Because you've got to get into the center of that piece of meat and sustain that heat over time. And sometimes by the time it gets to the into the middle, you don't have enough heat retained to get it soft, right? To get it that fall apart. So four minutes on a, I, ch I cut them in slices like this. Four minutes will work on like a pot roast. I actually like about 10 minutes. So if I'm in an emergency situation, I know in four minutes, my food will be cooked all the way through. But in 10 minutes, it's gonna be so soft and fall apart. Right? So I'm going to go 10 minutes, especially because I have to cook right now. Good? You got that, the meat part? Another tip on the meat. I, um, Cook's Illustrated was like one of my Bibles when I was doing this project. And um, they have a myth busted book, which I really liked. And it taught all the, they just went to the lab and tested all these things that we have had myths forever and ever. And what was the reality of them. Somewhere in that book, I got the idea to, hey, let's like just boil a bunch of water and instead of searing my meat, let's just drop the meat in the super boiling water. Won't that sort of sear the outside a little bit? And it actually works great for this particular process. So I'll put the water in there nice and boiling, drop them some roast, like the meat slices in there, bring them back to a boil, boil for 10 minutes, and then put them, whatever else I want in there. But a lot of times I'm making a pulled pork or something, so I'll just put them in here and the next morning I'll take them out and drain them and pull them apart. 